currently heading to Tampa Museum of Art because I found this art critic named Peter Clothier, I think his name is. He noticed that when he would go to museums, he would look at the the wall label longer than he would look at the actual painting. And so he realized he discovered the art of meditation and then he started incorporating that into his art viewing experience. And so he started this thing called One Hour, One Painting, where you look at a painting for one solid hour. And so I told my mom about this and so we're gonna go today and look at one painting for an hour. And we're gonna do it on separate floors so we're alone, so we're not talking to each other or distracted. So it's gonna be really interesting. I'm excited, I just, uh... My daughter Millicent doesn't think I can last an hour. I'm an impatient person, but I'm ready. I watched this one hour video last night on how to encounter a painting for an hour. So I've, I'm, I'm excited. So we made it to the museum. We're gonna just browse around and look at everything, and then we're gonna decide which art we wanna look at for one hour. Oh my gosh, there's a Chuck Close picture here. So I had a class in college, a 2D design class, and we did self-portraits in this style. So we split it up into squares and it was inspired by Chuck Close. It's made up of all squares. So we just did a lap around to see which one we might want to look at for an hour. And I think I already have my selection though. It's on the other side. Painting. Wait, this is a painting. Look. With the strands of hair. Hyper-realistic portraits. Wow, I thought that was a photograph. Wait, this one is cool. These, so the artist made this with a hole punch. These are all little punched. <gasps> oh wow, cool. Yeah, this might be really trippy to look at for one hour. That would be hard to look at for an hour. just went off an hour flew by that did not feel like an hour okay so we just finished our one hour mom how do you feel I feel great it was a really good experience uh, there's just so much to think about and participate in it and imagine what the story of the four characters in mine I don't know you'll have to show a picture of it but there were these four guys in a pool and they all look the same and I gave them names Ryan one two three and four and then towards the very end I was surprised and I took a very very close look and there are four different guys anyways it's just so much to contemplate and think about when you spend time with your thoughts they change and they go deeper. So yeah, that was so interesting. I have so many thoughts. I'll share more later when I'm at home and I sit down, but I was taking some notes to just record to remember what I was thinking about, but that was honestly such a good experience. I think everyone should do that. You might think an hour is a really long time, like how will I do that looking at one thing for one hour, but you'll truly be amazed at where your thoughts go. So I definitely encourage everyone to try this. I think everyone's gonna go into this with different mindsets. And I was happy that during the full hour, my mind didn't wander to any personal things. I wasn't thinking about any like problems. I wasn't thinking about politics. I wasn't thinking about people. I wasn't thinking about 
the future, the past. I was simply present in the moment, experiencing the painting, and I loved that. And I was so happy that I was able to do that for one full hour. Like, I don't think my mind really wandered at all during that hour to anything other than thinking about the painting, I was imagining myself inside the painting. I was thinking about so many things that I would never, never think about when you're just in an art gallery or in an art museum, going around, looking at all the paintings quickly. But when you take one hour to look at this painting, I started out by scanning my eyes along the entire frame. And then I, I got to thinking, how often when we're in museums, do we look at the frame of the painting? And when I got home, I actually read about the artist and he sometimes would paint his frames to make them match the painting and how he would listen to Sam Cooke, which I love Sam Cooke, and he would listen to soul music, and he, how he would sign his name with a rusty nail. So there's all these interesting details. I remember at one point, I was just focusing in on the way he signed his name, studying the letters. And something that's so interesting to me is the fact that you can feel so connected to the life of an artist, even though they have passed on. He passed away in 1994. So when I was born, I was born in 1990. So four years of my life overlapped with his life. And I was just thinking, it's so interesting that I'm sitting here today looking at this painting, feeling so connected to this artist, seeing the brush strokes. It got me thinking about what was the artist like? I didn't know anything about the artist, so I was imagining what kind of mood were they in when they were painting? Was this artist painting in a studio? Were they in a big room? Were they outside? What was it like for them? What were some of the things that they were thinking about when they were painting? And so as I was sitting there, I was glad that it was a very empty museum. There weren't a lot of people around. It was really quiet. At one point there was a kid and his parents were there and the kid was running around and I overheard the dad say, don't run by the art, you have to appreciate it. And I really loved hearing that, it was so cute because there I was appreciating the art and then the only other people, the dad was also telling his son to appreciate the art. He's like, you don't just run by art, you enjoy it. So yeah, when you do run by art in an art museum, think about it, you kind of go, you look at the label, you look at it quickly, you kind of take it all in, you're like, okay, I saw this painting and then you move on to the next one. But when you take the time so many different things come up that you might not have noticed before. The painting I was looking at, I didn't realize there were these birds in the corner. So when I was scanning it, they were kind of blended in with the trees if you were looking quickly. But then when you stop and look, you notice there's birds in the trees. And then I started imagining what was beyond the painting. If I was inside the painting, there's a frame here. What's outside? What's behind me? What's around me? The mountains in the distance. There was a guy looking out into the mountains. What was his view? What was he looking at beyond? It was this whole inception experience. It was so crazy. It was something I've never experienced before, but I really loved it. It kind of reminds me of getting to know a person. So if you're at a party, if you're at a social event, you're kind of having small talk with strangers. You know, you find out their name, title, maybe their job title, just as in an art museum, you're walking through, you see the name of the artist, you see the title, you look at the painting, you kind of gather your first impressions, and then you move on and you didn't really go deeper. And that's why I love this experience is because it's like the way that you deeply get to know a person, the longer you know them, the more things are revealed to you over time, the closer you become to them, the more details that you might not have noticed about them when you first met them. You just keep learning more and more and more new things about them. And it's the same thing with art. When you spend more time, you start to notice new things and it makes you appreciate it even more. And something that really surprised me was I was thinking to myself, when we look at a landscape or a nature painting, how often do we actually imagine the weather inside the painting? How often do we think, I wonder if it was cold or, oh, it must be really hot or, oh, this is what this weather conditions must have been. And in this particular painting I was looking at, there was someone leaning into a fire. So in my mind, I was like, maybe it's cold. So there were two people sitting by the fire. One of them was leaning in and the other one was kind of more straight. So I was thinking, was it cold and he's leaning in to get warmth from the fire? Or are they just having a really good conversation around the campfire and you're leaning in to listen to what someone's saying because it's so interesting. You know, like what were some of the conversations they were having around the fire? And there's a guy who's looking off into the distance. What was he thinking about? And, and then the birds in the tree. And there was one separate 
looking out into the distance. And then I started to feel these emotions when I'm looking at this painting of look at these black marks that reminds me of a sense of sadness. It reminds me of someone who's struggling with an addiction and they're trying to escape. It reminds me of fingers grasping on. And then there's so much of a painting you wonder, was this intentional on behalf of the artist? Was it unintentional? Did it just happen? The way certain colors were blended together. Then I noticed colors that I didn't notice when I first looked at it, a beautiful teal color in the corner, and then some brown mixed in and some highlights of orange. So towards the end, I started thinking about story of what's the story of this painting and what were the story of these people? And is there a story that the artist intended when the artist created this picture, did they have a story in mind? Or is it up to us as the viewer to look at it and create our own story and our own imaginations? So yeah, overall, such an amazing thing to do. Sit down for an hour, look at a piece of art, see what comes to your mind. And if you're interested in trying this out, I will link below a video of the art critic, Peter, who created this exercise. And so there's an hour long video where he pretty much talks you through it. I watched this and I sent it to my mom as well to watch before so we could get an idea of maybe how to spend the hour. But yeah, it's such an interesting concept and I really encourage everyone to try it at some point. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos every time I post. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.